bronc riding school, where would you start? Well, um, yeah, well, you want to make sure your saddle <laughs> is proper fitting, and this one's probably not, obviously, but, oh, like, to get kind of the right length, like, behind, behind your, your knee, like, your knee right here, you know, like, four fingers to hit your swells is what I was taught, and so, yeah, like, you're, it's obviously big, big yeah. but you'll have to make do, and and then you adjust your stirrups. Um, there's these, obviously these, that you know lengthen it, and then you, on where you're sitting on, there's a they're called quarter binds, and they finely adjust it because you you want it just kind of perfect. And so this is kind of a big adjustment here, and then you fine tune it with a with your quarter binds that are underneath your saddle. And then these are your front binds and they they determine like the pressure on your legs like in your swells when you bring your feet back. Like you, some guys like a lot of pressure, some guys don't like any at all. So you kind of just find find where you like it best, where it feels best for you, really. And uh usually, I mean, you want even even pressure kind of on them the, the whole spur stroke so that's where you kind of set them and you can kind of go from there normally you guys wear different boots slightly different tell me about those um i mean a lot of guys wear boots that are a tiny bit too big um you want them to come off if you get hung up um a lot of times like if you get bucked off to one side or the other your foot will come up and kind of it'll kind of swing over your saddle and your your it'll get hung and if your boots don't slip off um, then you're going to get drug around for a little while and some guys slit their boots um, most guys like i said i just you know had a pair that was just a hair big and you, like and you put baby powder you know in them so they're kind of they kind of you know slip on and off pretty easy okay and normally you'd be wearing shafts and you would use dry resin, right? Yeah. What, what purpose does that serve? Um, you, it just gets a little sticky and a little tacky, and it just, it kind of, I don't know how much it helps. It, in your mind, it probably helps more than it actually does, but you just get them sticky, and so it just helps your legs stick to the swells a little bit. Figure out what hand you would ride with, I guess. Oh, I don't know. And it's, like I said, it was never... I don't know how you, like I'm right-handed and I rode left-handed. I know right-handed guys that ride right-handed, you know, and I know the opposite. It's really, it was never a question for me every time, like you just, I picked it up and it, it was in my left hand. Okay. And when you, how you hold it, you like you'll, you put it through your index or your ring finger and your pinky finger and you hold it like that. And, and that just kind of gives you a little bit better grip than that and you do that some guys will put like put it through their pinky i never did but i know some guys that do but that's basically what you do there how would you measure a bronc ring? well when you're on a horse when you halt through them you usually take a mane which i guess we can show you later okay um you pull it back to the end of their mane you mark it and a lot of times you can, like, you run it up over their head and you take it to their eye. And nine times out of ten, that is the exact same spot. And, and then a lot, most times, that's about your average when you, when you pull it back and measure it off your, off your saddle once you have them saddled. Uh, Just like X know. and 3, which, like I said, your, your average, like when you do measure it, like you, you kind of take your average and let's say that this is an average and then if somebody if your contract they'll tell you what to take if he says x and two you know it'd be that x one two three four like double x is that um you just really you, you take whatever they they take you know and so if it's two if that's your average you go two fingers past that and that's where you grab a hold of it I mean, the purpose of a spur board is you basically you practice marking a horse out, and you, like I said, I'd just sit there 
at college in my dorm room and you just you mark them like you just practice setting your feet and dragging them back you know and spurring them I mark out when a horse leaves his front shoot or your shoot like when his front feet hit the ground for the first move or jump like your feet have to be set above the points of the shoulder and you have to hold them there um, through that first jump um, yeah that's that's what it is and then you, st you then you can start spurring them after that so. it actually sets you up for like your it does yeah I mean it if you don't do it you're behind I mean it's what you need to do to set yourself up to make a good ride um, but I mean that's like I mean basically it's what you want I mean a tote turned out as much as you can and as high as you can Goodness. <laughs> yeah and and that's that's a mark out and then yep <laughs> right exactly <laughs> forgot about your so. free hand <laughs> and like i said you kind of want your you want them to drag back not slowly but you could you drag back make you know contact the whole way and then when you set them you really want to you know drive forward and set them hard again you're actually picking your feet up no time? you don't pick them up i mean you kind of you want them to remain in contact with that spur board that's it's kind of nice with the spur board you can kind of feel and make sure that you do keep them in contact the whole way back and then you know like i said end forward you don't want them coming way out and whatnot